Go for it. Well, welcome everyone. Good to be here today. Beautiful Saturday here in New York City. And as Jeff was saying, I do GAP. So that's pretty much what we're going to talk about today. And it's interesting because on the weekends, if you're an active trader, it's nice to take a break, give your brain a rest from looking at charts. But, you know, it's been a wild, wild couple of days in the market. And really since the beginning of this year, since January, the market has been very volatile. So I'm going to talk today about shorting, which is very advantageous. We will discuss why. But like on Friday, for example, if you shorted the market, you really made bank. Why? The market fell and fell off a cliff on Friday. And we may be down again on Monday. I mean, who knows? This is the type of market where not only do you need to know how to go long, but you also need to know how to short. And for some reason, and I don't know, I don't know why it is, a lot of people are hesitant about shorting or they just don't understand how to short. I don't know. And I'm talking retail traders, all of you people that are here right now, I consider retail traders. Uh, but the fact is that anybody can short. You can short as a retail trader. You can short as a professional trader. Again, you can set up your account, your trading account to do that. And it's fun to short. And we're going to talk today about why. This is me. If you have questions, you can always call me at 929 gap You can email me at melissathestockswish.com. And you can always go to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype and follow me at any one of these places I appear on television. And actually, about a month ago, I predicted that the market was lower. It took a couple of weeks, but I'm not surprised the fact that we've fallen off. I talked about it actually three weeks ago when I was on Shutter TV, and at that time we were rallying, and probably nobody believed me. <laughs> but but um, one of the things that I do is, based on technical analysis, and again, you know, Jeff has his whole charting package, I read the charts, I look at the price data. While you can always look at the fundamentals and say, okay, I think this stock is higher because of the fundamentals, or I think this stock is lower because of the fundamentals, the reality is that what counts is right now, what's happening this second, this minute, uh, right, right now, that's what really counts because all that matters is for you to make money this second. I'm trying to open up here to see the questions. Um, how do I do that, Jeff? Do you know? How do I open up the little box to see any questions? I don't know how to do it. I can see people typing, but I don't know how to look at them. Hey, this is Bobby. Uh, Jeff stepped away oh, okay. for a moment, but uh, if you have the go to webinar screen, you should be able to drop down the questions bar. Okay. I see it. Now, how do I expand? Undock from panel. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Yes, there you can undock go. it and make it larger. Okay, very good. I think there's a couple questions there for Jeff. He can answer later. Oh, okay. People are reluctant to short because the market goes up 80 to 85% of the time. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but I will say that most of the life of the market, the market's in, uh, in an uptrend. That's true. But we're talking about active trading, day trading. So what does it matter if the market's in an uptrend? It doesn't matter at all. You can short and get in and get out in one day, in five minutes, in one hour. So it doesn't really matter. Again, we're talking about swing trading, options trading, day trading. No one said that you have to be in something for umpteen years. If you're talking about a long-term retirement account, you would want to pick very strong stocks to be long for long-term investing for something like your retirement. But no one should be concerned about shorting the market when they're an active trader. And again, that's what I do, and that's what we're going to talk about here today. So the idea of trading is one goal for you. That's all that you should have every single day when you get up out of bed in the morning. You have one goal when you trade. One, it's to make money. And the whole idea is you can make money going long and short. But what I found with shorting is shorting actually gives me a niche. One of the reasons is one of the very reasons I just explained is that many people do not like to short, don't understand how to short, or those that do don't know how to do it well, okay? But you have one goal, it's to make money. And that is what you should think about and that is what you should focus on every single day. Now I plop this in here, I'm not gonna go over every single trade we've taken since the beginning of 2022. But since the beginning of 2022, with an advanced trader risk, this is an average risk of about $2,700 per trade, day trades only, this is an options, this is where we are year to date, 292744 It has been a really big year for us. Why? 
Well, first of all, I have a good system on any given year. But second of all, many of the trades that we've done have been very big trades because we've had a lot of sell-off moves in stocks and particularly the market. So it has been a great year to capitalize on these types of moves. And again, if you don't know how to short, you're missing out. You're missing out on profits. And not only that, you're probably losing in the last few months. 2021 was a bullish year for the market where the market really basically power trended up all year. So you could have gone long every pullback almost in the market in 2021 and made money. That is not working this year. And by the way, that doesn't work consistently to do even in bullish market times, okay? Which again, most of the life for the market, it is in an uptrend. Whether we go and break in a downtrend or not is neither here nor there. I will short stocks that are in uptrends. I will short stocks in uptrends, downtrends all around the town. And again, it is based on my system, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But in order to become successful, you absolutely, absolutely need a system. That's number one. Whatever you're doing, you have to have a system. What do I mean by a system? You get up in the morning, you say, I'm going to look for this. And I'm going to do this. And it has to be something you can replicate Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And not only that, I think you need a niche. Because the reality is, if you don't have that, you're going to be competing against so many other people, millions of people that are trading. And if you never get really, really good at one thing, you're going to have a difficult time making money. Again, trading is not about having a broad-based view of this thing, that thing, and the other. And I don't have time when I get up in the morning to read research reports. And it's earnings season right now. For those of you that are active traders, you know that. If you don't, there are four quarterly earnings seasons a year. Stocks report their earnings, and they tend to have big moves in earnings, and they tend to gap. Some gap up, some gap down, some are long, some are short, but I don't read the fundamental reports of every single earnings that come out. I wouldn't have time to do that and make a decision to trade each morning. So it gives me a niche though to short because of the fact that many people, like I said, do not know how to do that well. And that is one of the things that we're gonna talk about today. But you can make money in the market, people do it all the time. However, not everyone does, why? Because they don't have a system. And even something that they're doing, they may say, well, this is my system, but the reality is it may not be a system. Like buying pullbacks is not a system, okay? And I think people think it is, and it isn't. And the thing is that every time you take a trade, you're never making and creating something when you make money. It's not like you're going out and you, and you knit a sweater and you're selling the sweater out there on the street in Manhattan. No, you didn't really make anything. There's always one winner and one loser, and the winner is taking money from the loser. You're taking money from another human being, from another person, could be the guy next door, when you win in a trade. So it's always the idea, always the idea of being the one that knows what to do, that has the niche, and that is ahead of the game to predict what's going to happen because, you know, before it actually does, okay? Um, I wasn't talking about, I was talking about day trading. I just started talking here. I've been talking for about six minutes. So, <laughs> so that's what you're here for an hour for me to talk for one hour to hear what I have to say. Um, but I will tell you that I can read long-term trends based on gaps as well. Again, we're, we're going to talk today a little bit about options, but even the options that I do are short-term and the day trades we're going to talk about too, but you can short and for long term as well. There are many, 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 many stocks that you could have shorted at the hit of 2020 when COVID hit in March of 2020 that you could still be short. There's lots of them. Boeing is actually one of them. And that reports actually in a few days. Uh, the cruise lines, uh, other airlines too, I could go on and on. So you can short stocks for long term if you want to that are against the overall market. And I, I look at that, what I'm basing that is I'm looking at the overall trend as well. But that is something that where you invest your money for the long term. That is not something that's going to offer you cash flow. Day trading actively or doing options in and out of options actively gives you cash flow where you are having money. I call it chunking it out where you're pulling $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, whatever you're pulling out of the market each and every week. And that is something that is advantageous again, because you don't have to wait for the trade to move and you don't have to suffer through the swings of something. And that's what's happening right now in the market. Since the beginning of this year, 2022, people are long stocks and they're suffering through the swings and the wiggles and the jiggles of the volatility. But you need a good system. You need a good system to succeed. And not only that, you have to follow it daily. So what do I do? My focus, as I was saying, is gaps. That's all I do. Every single trade I make a decision that I take is based on that. 
And again, my niche is shorting, but I'm looking at the gap. So I look at a chart, and we're gonna go over some charts here in a little bit. I look at a chart and I will rate the gap. And I determine if the stock is gonna move higher or lower and how I'm gonna take it on the day. I prefer to short. I created my system in a, in a bullish market, actually. I created my system back in 2008. It took me about three years to figure it out. And the market was very bullish then. So all of these years that I've been trading for 14 years going on 15, I've been focusing on shorts and we've been in very bullish market times. In fact, if you bought the market after the election, presidential election 2016, we've had such a tremendous move since then, it's hard to believe. And even with the sell-off we've had this year, it doesn't even compare to where the market's gone from 2016. Now we're coming up to the midterm elections at the end of 2022. And then of course, another presidential election in 2024. It'll be interesting to see where the market goes from there because we're in very different times right now for many, many reasons. But again, if you're someone that wants to actively trade or put your money at work for you, you have to think about what's happening right now today, this second, this minute, between now and four o'clock when the market closes, okay? So I focus on one thing, gap. So what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. That's it, simple. How many things gap on every day? Almost everything gaps. It's very, very rare that something would close at 3201 at four o'clock Eastern time and open the next day at 3201. While that does sometimes happen, it's very rare, okay? So most everything has a gap. It's about finding the right gap or what I call a good gap, something that's predictable, that I can predict the next direction that it's going to go. But really, stocks gap most every single day, including the market, but not every gap is what I said, a good gap, or what I called, I coined a term, I called it my system, the golden gap. I'm looking for gaps that are predictable, so you can take it in the direction that it's going. How do I do that? I use my rating system. Now, let's take a look here at the market. This is, again, a chart of the QQQs just going back the last month. We were talking about when I was on, on TV and I was talking through the rally. Well, here was the rally. Hard to believe where we are right now compared to where we were just a month ago. So here was the rally up. We dropped off here since the beginning of the year, back down here, March 14th was a low, rallied up. And this took us into the end of March, wiggled and jiggled, wiggled and jiggled, and then we fell. And then of course we had a big sell off um, into the last day, which was Friday. Actually, I don't have the Friday bar in here. I look for gaps based on earnings, based on news, based on sector, based on the market. Stocks gap for many reasons. Earnings season particularly, though, is what I'm saying is a good time to trade because you get a lot of gaps. So you might get up in the morning and you might have two or three good gaps on a non-earnings day. You might get up in earnings season and have 30. Okay, do you see the difference? So again, you can trade as many things as you want to trade. You can do as many trades as you want. I prefer to look at one thing, one pick a day, and then I trade it with size. And I think it makes it a lot easier to focus on that too, because you only need one trade a day in order to make money. Again, what is your job? You have one job, make money. That's it, okay? It's whole the idea about going, you know, and trading all day from 9.30 to 4 o'clock Eastern time. You can get crazy doing that. You can give money back in the afternoon doing that. It's the whole idea, again, you have one job to make money. If your goal is $1,000 a day, once you hit it, boom, you're done. It's very rare that the market will power trend all day long or your stock. Now, while that happened on Friday, like I discussed, and actually it happened the day before too, um, we started out rallied in the morning on Thursday and then dropped on Thursday, Friday, we just were you know, negative the whole day. But the fact is that that's rare that you'll be able to get in something to be in it all day from 9.30 to four. The idea is to get a quick move in and out if you are in something, and again, it's based on the gap and it's also based on momentum. Now, here was another really good chart here. And this is back from the beginning of the year, January. This had earnings just the other day, April 20th. This is Netflix. Here it was the day before. So let's go over what is a gap. Like I said, a gap is a difference between the close and the open. This is a daily chart. Boom. This is right up here before the earnings. Netflix closed at 4 o'clock Eastern time and then gapped down here. Snug as a bug. Right under 250, fell, dropped, fell, fell, fell. Anyways, this is a gap. Again, there are big gaps. There are small gaps. This is a little gap here, closed here, gap down. It's a little baby gap, but again, this is still a gap too. And if you shorted this, you would have made money as well. Now we did this and we're gonna talk about this, uh, this trade later, but anyways, this is, this is just a lot easier, I think, for people to see when you have such a big gap like this. What about this one over here? We did this one too. This was first quarter earnings season for Netflix. It was up here at four o'clock at what price? Hard to believe. This was just January, people. 
look what the stock has done. And again, this is the power, the power of trading momentum in the gap. And again, that's what I do. And this is this was a short. Again, we're shorting. Anyways, this is back here January. This wasn't like 100 years ago. That was January. The stock price was over 500. Look at it now. It's lost more than half its value from January to April. So within two earnings, it's dropped and lost more than 50% of its value. And again, you can go into the whys and the things and the this and the that. It's neither here there for there for me. I look at the gap and I'm rating it to determine, okay, what's gonna happen here today? Should I short this? Yes, boom, it rates good, do it. You can do it as a short, as a day trade short on margin, you can do it as a put. We did, we did both. Same thing over here. Now, it might have flipped, okay? It might have flipped around. It might have gone long, okay? But it didn't. It was a short, okay? Um, I'm focusing on the daily chart. I'm looking at the gap on the daily chart, whoever asked that. Um, you can, I like to take, well, the gap itself is happening in the post and pre-market. That is where I'm making the decisions, whoever asked that, Ari. I don't show that on here because I like to take it off when I'm trading on the live day. You can keep it on if you want to, but that's where the gap is happening. That's how it's happening in the first place. So good question. It's happening because after four o'clock or before 930, you have trades that are going off. You have professional traders, institutional traders that are buying and selling stocks. And that is what is creating the gap. We're going to talk about that more in a little bit. This was another one here, Facebook. Again, beautiful one. Talk about shorting, I love to short. This was up here back at the end of January. Stock was right over here, over 320, boom. Gap down here, this was February then. The stock had another tremendously big move down. Open here, fell, 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 fell. Again, you could have done this as a put or a day trade short. And you can see, again, see the gap, all right? We also did this this week. This had a big sell off this week, actually. Nice trade in that this week. I think I have this in this webinar. But we were talking about what's happening in the post and pre-market, guess what? Again, selling, selling, selling and buying, but these ones here we're talking about in Netflix and Facebook, we're selling. So I'm looking for the footprints of institutional money. When I make a decision what I'm doing with a stock or a gap, if I'm gonna go long or short it, I'm looking for big, big money to come in. I'm looking for big buying or big selling. That's how I'm making the decision whether or not I wanna go long or short. And again, I do prefer to short, but I'm following the footprints of institutional money because that's what drives stocks. That's what drives the market. It's big money and momentum, okay? And then the momentum is created by big money. And momentum is how you make money as one individual trader in the market, okay? If you are scalping like five pennies, 10 pennies, eight pennies, you know, it, you have to take a tremendous amount of size, 50,000 shares or something ridiculous, and it just doesn't make any sense and that's too risky to trade like that and we don't trade low float stocks. Everything that we trade, you've heard of these companies, you know what they do, they have huge volume. Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Zoom, all of the things we trade have volume and we're looking for momentum, we're looking for moves, okay? Um, I don't know what you're talking about about a, a green bar, there are gap ups and gap downs. Today we're talking about gap downs, uh, Vino Vinod. Getting back to momentum, if you have a thousand shares of the stock, say so you have a thousand shares of a stock, and you short it and it drops a dollar, boom. Say you short a stock at 230 and it drops to 229. How much are you gonna make if you have a thousand shares? A thousand dollars. If you have a thousand shares of a stock and you short it and it drops 10 cents, how much will you make? A hundred bucks. That's not much. That's not much. So again, it's the idea of trying to find stocks that are gonna have a big move. A big move, we want momentum. So would you rather make a hundred bucks or a thousand? Obviously a thousand. Again, this goes back to the idea where I said the focus. So you don't have to take 10 trades to make a thousand dollars or five trades to making $200 a trade. It's the idea that you can do one trade and you get it very precisely, which size and you're in and you're out. So the key to day trading stocks successfully is using a system. But I think that this is true in anything that you do. Uh, even swing trading and long-term trading, either way, you have to have a successful system that you apply. You you're, you're have the information, you're applying it, and you're using it. And again, this doesn't mean you never have any trades that lose. There will be trades that lose. I take trades that lose. I showed you the stats at the beginning. We have some losers, but we have way more winners than losers. And that's how you get ahead, and that's how you can be successful to do this, whether you want to do it part-time 
or whether you want to do it full-time as your career like someone like me that's up to you i have people that are trading with me and doing options um that are doing all kinds of things and they're not full-time trading at all i have a, one guy uh this is just a great story because he's a truck driver he's literally delivering packages and doing the options trades um and he and he does it he makes it work so there's people doing all kinds of careers and all kinds of things that want to make money in the market and right now because we're in this time a period of high inflation and it's not going away it is not going away it's probably going to get worse before it gets better high inflation rate rising interest rates everyone is looking for a way to make extra money and you've got to take it upon yourself uh, to do that and if you're the type of personality where you're an independent person and you have an entrepreneurial spirit then active trading is something that you might want to think about and if you're here and you're already doing that you probably already have uh those types of feelings where you want to be independent you don't want to rely on a boss and you want to work for yourself but for me every day i get up and i use my system so number one you have to trade a system that sets up with a high level of predictability in the directional move. Again, I never go long and short the same thing. Then I will trade a system that works independently of the market and does not need the market with it to work. I just told you I created my system in a bullish market. So I don't need a bearish market in order for my system to work to short stocks. But what will happen if we go into bearish market? And I am not predicting that. I am not predicting that at all. It's a possibility, of course. But the reality is that then there'll be a lot of things, a lot of things to do, even outside of the normal earnings season, uh, which, again, will be a very fruitful time for us to trade. So let's talk again here about what is a gap. This is the daily chart going back basically a year here, February to February 21 to 2022. You can see all the gaps in the market. Again, let's just look at some of them here. This was back in September. This is the Qs. We were running up, like I said, very bullish last year. Ran up, made a new high. Closed here, gap down, boom. Again, what is a gap? It's a difference between the close and the open. So we closed here, gap down. This was a short, boom. Here's another one over here. Closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Fell, fell, fell. Could have done that as a day trade. Could have done that as a swing trade. Could have done that as a put. A put is a short, okay? Let's look at some gap ups just to talk about it. Here was a gap up. Closed here, gapped up, rallying. You could have gone long here or done calls as options, took the market to new highs. This was in October. It feels like a long time ago. And then we rallied up here, made a new high. The last new high we made was the week of Thanksgiving and the overall QQQs. The SPY did make a new high at the first week of the year. We have not made a new high in the market since then. This is the longest, longest we've gone without making new highs in the market since I can't even remember when. And so it's very interesting. Like, again, we're in interesting times. And for the people that are actively trading that do not know how to short, you're missing out. You're really missing out. Again, let's take a look at it. What is the gap? Closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Here's another one here. Closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Here's another one here. This is a gap. Closed here, gap down, fell. This was money if you were short before it flipped. Okay. Uh, I just look at the chat, charts. Everything I do is based on the gap and the gap in the chart. So it's all price action that I'm seeing live in the chart, the chart data, which is in live time. So success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. So how can you become successful day trading? You need to have a system and a strategy that you can use consistently on a regular basis. And I also think it's important to have a niche. I really, really do. Some of the things that I do that I have a niche in is shorting and gaps. I don't do anything else, but also I'm very, very good at reading the first half hour of the day in the market on a one minute chart. So I'm making decisions very fast, very quick. My brain works very quickly. So if you decide and you come and you want to trade with me, I'm calling the trades live in the room. And basically I'm shouting it out as it's happening. Sometimes we get a trade and they happen in five minutes and you could be in and out and we were talking about a dollar move. Sometimes you can make a $3 move in five minutes and then your goal is in for the day or you've surpassed your goal for the day and you're done. I would rather be in fast trades and in and out in 5, 10, 15 minutes than be in trades for six and a half hours. Your brain gets tired the longer you're staring at a computer. It's better if you can be in and out of things fast. So I like to do things fast. But again, the philosophy, the basis of everything that I'm doing is based off of institutional money. Big, big traders, hedge funds, banks, 
that are in the market. It's one of the reasons why my bias for the market has been that we would drop and not continue higher is because I don't see the institutional money buying the market. It's not coming in. It's not buying the market up. It's not supporting it. That's one of the reasons we have not been going long the overall market, okay? This was another one we did. This was the 21st to continue the 22nd. This was an earnings. This was AA. This, again, is a gap. Again, this big fat red bar here. So again, we got in and out. This actually ended up continuing way past where we get out of it. It fell all day. This was a nice trade. Take it up to the left. This was a 20th. See where this closed? Closed up here well above 85. Boom. Gap down in the morning here. Snug as a bug right at 80. Fell all day. Again, I got in and out of this fast in the morning, but you could have been in this to the close. I don't like to trade all day, but that was a nice short. Again, shorting, selling. This fell. Okay. That was Thursday. Then it continued here on Friday. So again, how can you make money shorting? You make money when the stock price drops. That's what happened here. So this stock AA, boom, fell. It dropped. If you were long, you would have lost money. You have to be short to make money. Again, who can short? Anyone can short as long as you have an account to set up to short. And again, you can buy puts, which is an option, which is basically shorting, all right? So retail traders and professional traders both can short. And again, this is very advantageous. You need to know how to short if you wanna be successful in all market conditions, but particularly in this market. So I was talking about options. Now, what's the benefit of doing options? Well, people love options because you can open up an options account at a retail broker with as little as $2,000. So you do not need to have as much money as you would need necessarily to trade on margin. And you only have to pay the cost of the option. For example, if the option costs a dollar, you will pay a dollar. You can't lose any more than that dollar. Say you buy one contract, it costs $100, you can't lose any more than that. And so very often the price of the stock will be dependent on exactly as far as what the price of the option is. In other words, an option at Amazon may cost you $50 for one, which is $5,000, but that's still a heck of a lot cheaper than shorting Amazon, for example, at $3,000 a share. So people like to do options because it's cheaper and you can trade them with less money and you have a fixed risk and you can also trade options overnight, okay? So the whole idea is that, again, options is another way for you to do it if you don't have a margin account. And the, the market, the overall market, I say the market, I'm gonna talk about the QQQs here today. I also trade the SPY and the diamonds, but I, we're talking about the Qs here today. This particularly has had many setups from many options in it since the beginning of this year to do. Uh, somebody's asking something. You identify the gap after the fact. Yes, I'm not predicting what the earnings are going to be on Apple. <laughs> okay, so I, I, you know, Apple has earnings as well. I just talked about BA. It's the 28th. I don't know if BA is going to gap up or gap down. No, I'm not predicting the gap. I'm not privy to that information. No, I wait for the gap. After I see the gap, then I rate it to determine if I'm going to short it or go long it. Okay, does that make sense? So again. You have to wait for the gap to happen. My rating system helps me determine what I'm going to do with it after I see it. I'm not predicting where it's going to go. I mean, sometimes I have an intuition where I'm in a trade, I'm up at a trade, and I decide to hold a trade because I think it's going to continue and gap down again or gap up again, but that has nothing to do with the system. The system is you wait until it gaps, like this Netflix here. And to be honest with you, I was surprised that this had this type of move. Where is it? A second time around. I mean, again, we did this one. This fell out of the sky. Another fall out of the sky one here. So again, you wait. You wait. This could have gone against you. Could have gone up to 500. I rate the gap to determine here to trade it on the live day. Do I want to short it or is it going to flip? Okay. Hopefully that makes sense and answers that question. Uh, we were talking about the market. We were talking about options. Okay, so let's talk about options a little bit. I have an options newsletter. You get the trade. It's emailed to you. I was talking about the truck driver. You get it. You take it. You you. This is just a newsletter. You do the trade. 
So I called on Tuesday, April 5th, and we'll go back to the market chart in a minute, and I'll show you the gap, the 363 strikes and the cues that expired that Friday. So again, you're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. A put is a short. Okay, let's look at four or five. Four or five was here. Okay. So market close here, gap down. Again, we're on the QQQs daily. 363, you see where it fell? Boom. Closed here, gap down, get the drop. Boom, boom, boom. And again, this is momentum. That is a move. It was a huge move. Why? Because I called the trade, fell that day, then it followed through and continued in a gap down the next day as well. This was very reasonably priced, 250 for one. If you bought 30 contracts at advanced trader risk of 7,500, you would have sold it at 1250. Profit was $30,000 on a $7,500 risk. If you took three and were $750, you still could have made a 400% risk. I'm gonna go back to the chart in a minute. But this is just one trade, okay? And again, for an options account, you can, you take the position, the position is you the max that you can take. You can't lose any more than that. So if this trade would have gone bust, you would have lost the whole amount. And if it works, then you let it ride out. Options, as you know, are tied into what? Direction and timing. And again, we were talking about momentum. Got to get the direction right in options, but you got to get the direction right in every trade that you take. But again, the momentum came here so nicely, so nicely. So here was the 5th of April. It dropped, boom. Closed here, gap down, boom. You see this move. And again, this is one I do not think people should hold options to the last day. If they're up on them, if you're down, that's one thing. But you would have made more money in this. Like, I don't know what it was worth that last day. It was over 400% the last day even. It continued to fall on the last day. And again, I'm not saying you should hold it the last day, but this is one that you actually could have. Okay. Uh, well, again, these are the, met, the, the meta stock charts. You can see the gap here. How do you use the charts? You see the gap. I'm, this is what I'm doing. You would come and learn my class and, and, and learn how to rank the gap to determine to short the cues here and here. As far as the charts, they are the, the resources that help you to be able to see that. You will need charts in order to see the gap at all. Okay? So that's how you would utilize it. And Jeff can talk about that more when we're done. Uh, JPM, then we did this here. Again, this was earnings. Doesn't look like much, but it was a nice trade. This was a day trade. Stock closed here, gap down, boom. Again, closed up here the night before around 131 and changed. Open in the morning down here was around 127-ish or something. And again, we shorted this. Doesn't look like much, but we got in and out quick. So the entry was 127.99. This is a day trade, which you would need margin to take the trade. And if you don't know what a margin account is, you can ask me or email me later or, or Google it. 4,500 shares was a risk of 27.45, exit at 126.80. Again, we were talking about momentum. So this is a little bit more than a buck, a dollar, dollar 20, in and out. You plop on the size and you take it and you're out. Profit was $5,355. Here's the one minute. Again, how are you going to use the charts to, to take the trade? So again, here's a one minute chart, rally, boom, short it, get the drop, in, out, done. And sometimes it's just like that. You might be in something for three minutes, two minutes, four minutes, five minutes, that's it. Again, this is not long-term investing when we're day trading. We're trying to make money every day, every day, okay? Now, we did talk about Netflix. This was a beautiful one, April 20th. Okay, here was the daily. Here was the trade that we did. So this is again an advanced trader risk. You can you could take a hundred shares. Okay, you take what you can afford. These are squished together pretty small, but this is a one minute chart. We entered it here two forty five oh five. Got the drop. Boom. We were out at two thirty four fifty five, and this kept going. This actually continued down. Again, I like to do the fast trades, and this was basically more than a $10 move, a huge trade, huge return on investment, huge risk reward, 6,300 profit, doubled your money with what you risked, but it, it kept going. So we got out at 2.34 and change in the morning, really fast here. Look where it went. This was crazy. And again, I called an option in this too. So I think if you wanna hold stuff, maybe you do the options, but in this case here, you could have held the day trade down 
way past where I got out of it. And, and look where it went. I think it was at 215 or something that low. So this again shows you, go back to the daily, the power of the gap and getting the direction right. Cause you gotta get the direction right. Someone was talking about gaps and this and that and gap fills. Gap fills do not work consistently. While sometimes something goes against it, it doesn't consistently do it. Anything, sometimes something works. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not the idea about any time. It's the idea about high, high, high times, high number of times that something's gonna work in your favor. Calculated risk that you're determining this is a high win ratio. And, and that's where I think people are having difficulty in 2022 because in 2021, like I said, people were buying every dip in the market and it worked. But that is not something that you can use forever, even in a bullish market, even in a bullish market. Okay, why? Because there's a million supports in the market. They're not all going to hold, even in an uptrend. Verizon, we just did on Friday. Again, take a look at the chart, the daily chart. This is a gap. Again, love to short. We shorted. Got out of, in and out of this quick too, but it kept going. Stock closed up here around 55. Boom. Gap down in the morning here was around 53 and change. We did a trade. We got in and out, in and out. But this kept going too. Why? It had the market in its favor. The market fell Friday as well. And we didn't do an option in this, but she could have done an option in this too. So we entered this short. And again, I call the trades live in the room, 53.05. Shares was 4,000, risk was 3,000. Your risk should be the same in almost every trade you take. So if you're gonna risk 2,000, it's 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. Or if it's 1,000, whatever, your risk should be similar. In the day trades, we're only ever in one thing at a time usually. Sometimes too, but that's so rare. Exited at 52.37, boom, in, out. Again, you're trying to turn it over once. If you risk 3,000, this is close enough. Close enough, but again, this kept going. So we got in it, got the drop, boom, out. And then it continued. I mean, it broke 52, it went down to 51.60 or something, I don't know. So, I mean, we literally could have made almost another dollar out of this, which was crazy. I never go back and look at something to say, I wish I could have made more and I should have made more anything. Be happy and grateful when you make money. Now, getting back to shorting, 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 that's the topic today and gaps. Short moves happen fast, why? Again, I personally like the fact that it happens fast. If someone said you could make $2,000 in three hours or $2,000 in three minutes, what would you prefer? I'd rather make $2,000 in three minutes and have the rest of the day to myself to do whatever I want. So, I mean, I like the fast moves, it suits me. But why does it happen? How can you do it? Because of panic, selling happens because of panic. Panic is fear. The fear creates the selling, okay? So people are scared and they sell. Sometimes they sell when they're down. Sometimes they sell when they're up, but they're not up as much as they were before, okay? Or specifically before when the market was up at the highs or things were up more. So it's the idea of panic and that is why it happens so quickly too. Now, how do I make the picks? I go through in the morning and I rate my gaps using a checklist. If you come and decide you wanna learn from me, this is what you'll learn. This is the meat and potatoes of what I do. It's a 26 point rating system that tells me that I'm gonna do Netflix or not do Netflix, or that I'm gonna short it, okay? But it's really the niche of the following, the institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes a gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. That's what drives the market. That's how I've read the market so well. They even say on live TV that I know the market's lower, which is very, I mean, that's, you know, it takes Hutchman to do that. And I said it, I said it right there. I said it when we were rallying, I said it because I saw that the institutional money wasn't buying the market. Anyways, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. So you have to look at something and say, I'm predicting at nine o'clock in the morning, eight thirty in the morning, 8 a.m., whenever you get up, whenever you're seeing the pre-market, whenever you're seeing the data, whenever you're seeing the gap, you're rating it, then you know all ahead of time what you're gonna do. I don't trade until the open. I may send options trades out at 7 a.m. in the morning, okay? Like I knew Netflix was gonna work when I get up that day. But the fact is we don't take the trades until after the open. But my whole system is really based on common sense because we're looking for institutional money. And again, think about it, the common sense in reference to the idea of shorting. Again, I don't know why people are scared to short that are retail traders, mainly because they understand, they say, okay, buy low, sell high, people get that. You gotta get the concept of shorting. And if you don't, that's another reason to come and learn from me. But shorting, it gives me a niche, people get scared. 
they get scared. They get scared and they sell, okay? And that's how you're gonna take advantage of that opportunity. And that's what you're gonna do. And again, a put, if you do an option, a put is basically just a short, all right? But some people like to day trade, some people like to do options. One of the pros of options, like I said, is you do not need as large of an account as you will for day trading. And you can hold overnight to get the overnight moves. So for example, if the market gaps down on Monday morning and you were in puts that I called on Friday, which I did call puts Friday, you will be up way more than you were at four o'clock Friday. So that is the advantage, the overnight move. And you have the insurance is that you have the protection of the risk and that the risk itself isn't any more than you took that you paid. So if you paid $2.50 for an option and you bought one contract, if, if, the, if the market would be, if you were to put, for example, if you took a put on Friday and you're up into the close and you didn't get out and you're like, I think I'm gonna hold this, I know it's lower, and then it goes against you, you can't lose any more than $250 if you took one. If we're up at the highs, you can't lose any more than $250. So that's a difference between swing trading and doing options, but you gotta get timing right with options. Timing is so important with options. But again, timing is important with everything too, because when you're in a day trade, you have to get out of it before four o'clock, okay? Um, I don't use a scanner. I don't use a scanner. If you if you wanna use a scanner, you can use a scanner yourself. Uh, okay, so overnight moves. So we sort of talked about this one before. We did talk about this one before. So this was a nice trade, why? because it followed through in the gap. Again, I called the trade on this day, closed here, gap down, called it, trade was up. I thought it would drop and continue, I was right, but thinking isn't knowing. The system told me that this was a good trade to take on this particular day. Whether you hold it a day or two or three, that's up to you. You have to have certain ma money management principles when you're doing something. For example, if you wanna take four contracts, get out of two into the first drop, hold the other two. There's another idea. So again, but one of the reasons that trading uh, options as gaps is advantageous is you can capture the overnight moves. And again, you have the fixed risk. It's not like a swing trade because swing trades is, is something where you don't have a fixed risk. Something can go against you, say you were short. And again, it would be all the way up here over the highs. You be you essentially are, are, are down an unlimited amount of money. It depends on your size and your position, okay? So this is a nice way to do it but you gotta get the timing right, and we do the weeklies. Now, what can you expect to earn as far as trades one to one? And I think that even if you take an option, 50% return investment is good. But if I'm taking a day trade, I'm looking for one. If I'm taking an option, I'm trying to get one out of that too, or 100%. Some trades go more, but I think 50% is normal, and if you can't watch a trade after you buy an option, put a sell order immediately at 50%. It's a day order, it's a limit order. It'll cancel out if it doesn't fill by the end of the day and you can get up the next day, you'll still be in the train, it may be up more, or you just put a sell order again at 50%, okay? So how do you make good choices? This is critical. You have to find quality trades. And I think that that, that with the evolution of Reddit and all, all the chat rooms out there, I think people, while they love the camaraderie, and there's camaraderie in coming to these, these types of uh, lectures, like these all day lectures too. The fact is that you've got to find quality trades. When you're taking ideas from strangers and you don't understand their system or what they're doing, how can you have any conviction behind it and you're still risking your own money? You have to understand what you're doing and you've got to take it seriously if you want to, if you want to do well. It's the idea of really, really understand what's happening so that you can make good choices. Making good choices is important. And I know that people, when they're trading for a while and they're losing money, what happens is it gets away from them and they start to make worse choices and then they spiral out of control. Don't do that to yourself. Be honest with yourself and say, I have not been making good choices. I'm going to do better starting Monday and I'm gonna make better choices. And it really is about common sense, good money management, don't overtrain. Don't be piggy about targets, know what you're doing, have a system, all the same things that, that you've heard a million times before and things that you know, that you know. You've been trading for more than a year. You know these things, but you may not follow them all the time. And, and again, a lot of it is because people are chasing the money. The money is your goal, but you still have to know why you're doing something, okay? And money management is important. I discussed having the same risk on every trade. And also using stops is important too. In the live trading room, I'll call the stop. I'll call the entry and the stop, okay? You gotta put the stop in. Otherwise something can go against you, you know, you don't even know where it can go against you, okay? 
I buy or sell the put, that's it. And again, I'm using my gap rating system to do the option. It's very simple. We're looking for momentum in the options. If I'm buying a put, I think it's gonna drop big time. If I'm buying a call, I think it's gonna rally big time. Same thing, okay? We, we were going along CVX a lot at Chevron. It's an oil stock. I haven't, I haven't looked at that actually for the last couple of days, but we did a bunch of trades in that were calls and that's been working this year too. Why? Oil's been running up. Again, I'm not in anything with that right now, but that's what we've done recently as far as the call side. Any other questions here? So again, you have to win more than you lose. Training is about odds. Put the odds in your favor. How do you do that? Use a system. Take calculated risk. Have a niche. Get good at what you do. When you're doing all kinds of things, you're doing crypto and this thing and futures and day trades and options, you're never gonna get good at anything if you're all over the place. Get good at one thing. Use size, add size to it, and that's all you need. That's all you need. You can make a lifelong career out of doing one thing. Trust me, I've done it. And now I'm teaching people how to do it. So you don't need to be all over the place. You're never going to get good at one thing if you're all over the place. And again, we don't really scalp. If I'm, if I'm desperate for a trade and we don't have anything good, I might scalp something for 25 cents, but I'm trying to make a buck. I'm trying to make more than that, ideally. But you need an edge in order to get a good return investment or risk reward. And that's my goal every morning in the pre-market. I'm trying to figure it out. And the edge I have is focusing on gaps and then really the, sh the downside. So I rate the gaps in the morning and I'm making the prediction before the move occurs. I'm talking about on the live day, not the gap itself. I'm rating the gap so the gap's already there for me to see it, okay? If you know what direction and where stock will go before it goes there, that's how you're going to make a lot of money. So again, we shorted the market before the market in the morning at 9 a.m. on Friday morning. I said, we're going to fall today. It's crazy people are going along this, but we're going to fall. We're going to fall all day. 100% conviction, 1,000% conviction, no chance of failure. That's exactly what we did. That is just pure talent on my part to be able to make a prediction like that before the market falls like it did all day. And I made that prediction at 9 a.m. before the market opened, before we took a trade. The reality is it comes from experience. Experience that I know how to read price action in the gap of doing this now for almost 15 years. When you have experience to do something, you can be aggressive. You can get in in the first five minutes of the day, which we very often do, and sometimes get in and out in 10 minutes. Now, as far as options, again, I'm holding them for longer. But again, experience, understanding how to do something really goes a long way. And then when the market rallies, like it does, like it did at the end of March, if you happen to be in shorts or, for example, you wouldn't lose conviction or kill trades if it rallied against you. We are going to go over Facebook um, here. I called this trade. This was just this week. It was an option. It went against it. It was down. It rallied. There were some people that were on the options letter. They haven't done my class yet. They killed the trade with a loss. That was crazy. I tell people not to do it. And that's why you shouldn't risk more than you can afford to lose. It went. Not only did it go, it went huge. I thought this was a good exit here. It kept going and going and going. Again, can't be piggy about stuff. This was a huge trade right in here. But the trade first was down. Then it went. Having conviction, which comes from experience and knowing a system and believing in the system, helps you make money. It helps you make a lot of money. And it helps you from not making mistakes. Here was the trade. I called the 205s on the 18th. Again, this little tiny, 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 tiny bar. But the trade didn't go right away. In fact, it was down. And the market rallied here too. Then it went boom. And that was there on the 20th. Cost was 225. 40 contracts. Risk is an advanced trader risk of 9,000. Sold at 850. That was, that was the first day it fell. I don't even know what this was the last day. It was probably something stupid, like 700% return on investment or whatever. It, it went to 190, it broke 190, it broke 185. You could have held it all day on Friday. It was crazy. I don't know what the low of the day on this was Friday. And this is, again, I don't sell people to hold trades of the last day necessarily. If they're up a lot, which you were in this, this is an exit on that first selling move on the drop in the momentum. And it kept going and going and going and going. This was a sick call. Um, but again, some people messed it up because they, they get scared. Don't get scared. Take your risk accordingly so you don't have to be scared. If taking one contract means you're gonna make money and hold a trade through, do it. 
rather than taking five or 10 or outside of your risk parameters. So if you did a beginner trader risk of five, 11.25, you would have made 31.25. Again, this is a 278% return on in investment with an exit this first drop day, but it kept going here. And then when I don't have the last day here, it was a ridiculous trade. It was a great call. But I wanna point out again, how having an understanding of a system and following the system and good money management, which you've kept you in the trade. If you take more risk you can afford, when the trade goes against you, you get scared and then you'll kill it. And then you not only take the loss, you miss out on the money when the trade goes. Your goal is to make money, not to not, to not lose. And I think that many people that are trading for a long time and they're losing for years and years and years, they're, they're in the mode of trying to not lose. <laughs> you know, I get up every morning to, my goal is make money. I, you know, while I size myself accordingly and I use stops, I'm not like, my goal isn't to not lose. My goal is to make money. If you see yourself you, as your goal is to not lose, your head is upside down, upside down, and you have to straighten it out because all you're focused on then is losing. Losing, 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 losing. You understand? Um, let me see what the question was. Missed it. Um, there's only one kind of gap, in my opinion. I know you can you can name and term a lot of other things. To me, there's only one type of gap. I think somebody's asking something about Metastock, Jeff. Jeff's there. Okay, so again, no, we're I'm talking. Listen, I'm just a question. Oh, go ahead. I had to make that for a continuation day. So you can, uh, like, it would be fairly easy to do a scan for a gap uh, in Metastock. I think uh, really kind of what it comes down to is how you want to rank them. I think that's really kind of where the class comes in. So uh, finding gaps is easy, but uh, standing for them is actually pretty easy so, as well. So Mike, if you need any help with that on the Metastock side, we'd be happy to help you put together a quick gap scan. Uh, that's all the input I have. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so, so, so Jeff can help you find them, and then you would come to me to learn how to rate them. I think that answers the question. Yep, that's exactly what I was trying to say, but you said it so much better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So anyways, correct trade selection is very important. I think it's important in any type of market, bullish or bearish, but we are in a volatile market this year, 2020. I don't think anyone would deny that now at this point. And so knowing that, knowing that you really have to be super duper picking. And I'm, I'm not saying 100% this, I'm not gonna make a prediction 100% this, but I realized a couple of days ago, and I talked about in the trading room, there is a possibility, there is a possibility that the market does not make a new high at all this year in 2022 in the queues. That's a distinct possibility. If we do, we're looking into the late summer, early fall type of part, part of the year. And that's gonna be really difficult for people. While we could, Apple could gap up and have fabulous earnings and Amazon and Google and Facebook and everything else it hasn't reported, and we could blow it out of the water and rally up in the next two weeks. That could happen. That's why I'm not saying 100%. But I'm saying I realized a couple of days ago that man, there is a possibility, we're so far off the highs right now that we don't get there for months or at all this year. The backdrop of what's happening overseas and everything else that's happening with inflation and rising interest rates, coupled with bad earnings in the financials and some other things too, means it's gonna be a struggle for the market to get back up to the highs, a struggle. And again, I'm not saying 100% prediction, but I have a feeling that that's a possibility. And that's gonna make it for very difficult trading for individual traders like you people here, if you don't know how to short. You're gonna have a hard time finding good opportunities to the long side on a lot of days. So you need to understand that and you need to learn how to short if you don't know how to short. And you should not not feel comfortable doing it. It's just a function of learning how to do it, just like you learn how to do how to go long in the first place. But everything for me is rating the gap. I go through the checklist in the morning, the points tell me where the money is flowing, whether in or out, okay? And it matters so that you know what direction to take a position to profit. So again, what do you need to make trading work? Number one is strategy. For me, it's called golden gaps. I do it every single day, okay? Number two, you need a rule, a daily system to follow the rules for the picks. You can't just take whatever all the time. 
You can't short every gap down, you can't go long every gap up, and you can't do the reverse, okay? And you can't deviate from it. You have to have a set of rules, you have to follow those rules. And then you need a method and a structure to enter the picks. So if I write something, like I said, at 8 a.m. and I know I wanna do it, where am I getting in? Where am I getting out? All of these things, this is what I teach in the class, but you have to have a structure for that too. And again, letting things play out, which means not risking too much. So you need monetary goals. This is number four, day per week per year. I say chunk it out. Sometimes I talk to people, they say, well, what do you think about this? I have this much money in the account. I said, listen, what's your goal? Break it down. You know, one guy I was talking to, he, he would be happy with $500 a week. It's very realistic. You know, I'm sure he's making more than that now. But the point is just break it down for yourself. Sometimes people are like, oh, you know, if they've lost money the last five years trading, the idea of making even a hundred grand a year seems completely insane to them. It's like a million. So, you know, just break it down. You say, I wanna make $2,500 a week, $500 a day, whatever it is, okay? You will get there if you follow some type of structure. You need to follow a structure, but it's really the reliability of a system and sticking with one thing and not deviating from it. It's about calculated risk, like I said. If you wanna take risk for Rick's sake, then you're just gambling. Trading is not gambling, and you should not think of it that way. And again, trading has to be something you take seriously if you want to be successful. And I would think that you would want to be successful. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it? If you just want to gamble, then go to Atlantic City, have a good time, go out, stay out late, go to Las Vegas. This is about something you should take serious like a business. Now, why? You don't have to trade all day for six and a half hours like a normal job. For the 30 minutes you're trading, if you're sitting at your desk for 30 minutes, you better be on point. Have your coffee, have your breakfast, be focused on what's going on, and have some clear decisions in your head where you're getting in, where you're getting out, and how much are you risking. And again, how much you're risking really has to do with the size of your account. If you have questions about that, you can always ask me, but I say start out slow. Start out slow as a beginner. You have all the time in the world to build it up if you're doing well. And again, we were talking about confidence too and conviction. If Once you build your confidence that you can actually do it, you will risk more over time because you will have the confidence. And I think some people are so inconsistent with their trading, with what they're doing, that they lack the confidence and confidence is extremely, extremely important. Uh, you can trade ETFs, like I said, we trade the market. We trade the market, so the QQQ is an ETF for the market. And we do the SPY and we do, <clears throat> we do other ETFs too, so yes, uh, ETFs do gap. As far as options, you, we're not, again, we're not trying to save pennies. Someone's looking at the, the difference between the bid and the ask. We're not looking to try to make pennies or save pennies. Um, we're trying to make dollars. So if you pay 25 cents more for something or 30 cents more for something, if it goes $2, who cares? Everybody's gonna pay an exact price that's slightly different. Some people pay a little bit more, some people pay a little bit less, some people take it right out of the gate, some people wait till 945. It's, it shouldn't matter. If the trade's gonna work, then no, it's gonna work. If the trade's gonna lose, it's gonna lose. The way that I call them, that's how it is. Because hopefully that makes sense. But again, I teach a class on this once a month. If you wanna come and learn my system, you'll learn more in detail what we talked about today, which is really the point structure, how to take the trades, how to get in, how to get out. And again, the whole idea is for you to make money. But it's a 26-point checklist. It measures gaps or rating them in the daily chart. It looks for a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big move in the day, early confirmation of the bias, precise entries with follow through, and a good risk to reward. This is the meat and potatoes of what I do. And again, this is the whole day on the Saturday of my class. One system is all you need to make money, and you will learn it in the checklist. So the class is next weekend, April 30th and May 1st, 9 to 5. Tuition is $69.99. Everyone pays the same. That's the price of the class. It's online. If you're interested, you email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to sign up. And I am doing an earnings season special because it's a busy time to trade right now. If you sign up by Thursday, it's a deadline to sign up for the class anyways, the 28th. Again, it's Saturday and Sunday, Eastern time. Then you would receive the trading room free to the end of 2022 and the options newsletter. That's a huge deal. I'm doing that for an earnings season special for this week. I had a girl that signed up Thursday for the class, was in the room Friday. We did Verizon. She made money. She didn't even do the class yet. <laughs> so she's uh, thrilled to bits and pieces. So. Again, if you want to join, you can get in and start trading this week. There's a lot of stuff out this week. It's a busy time to trade. I think giving people the opportunity to do uh, options and the equity trains of the room helps them decide which one they like best or both. I like both. I like both because I'm not day trading on Amazon, but I'll do options in it. And then I also get the overnight moves in the market, which I like as well. Um, 
I think that's everything. Vinod, I've seen you at a million webinars. I hope one day you join. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. We did have one uh, question from oh. YouTube, if I can ask. Go ahead. Uh, Jay wants to know, will we learn how to do everything by ourselves? Yes. Yes, you will. It's six, the class is 16 hours and we have one hour break each day for lunch. So yes, you will learn how to do everything with yourself. As far as me, you get the support by being in the room after the class, which I think is good for people to start out. But I have people since I've had the business for 10 years that are not in my room that have done the class. Many people have done the class and they're trading on their own. I think the support helps you in the room afterwards, but you will learn how to do everything on your own. All right. Uh, thank you very much, as always.